In watching this video, we're going to assume that you already know how to find the neap and spring rates of tide and the direction of tide, either using the Tidal Stream Atlas or the Tidal Diamonds, or indeed both. But what we need to do now is take a step backwards and we need to think about which of those pages in the Tidal Stream Atlas we're going to use for our particular passage, um, or which piece of data, which row in the Tidal Diamond table we're going to use. And we're going to imagine we're going to go on a passage for one hour. But before we do that, we need to think back to what those Tidal Diamonds and those the Tidal Street Atlases were related to. And they were related to a high water time, a standard port. In this case, for both of those, it was Victoria. So we've turned to the page for Victoria in our training ornac. We've turned to the tide table. I'm going to assume that today's date is the 21st of February. Now remember, if it was in the unshaded section, we'd have to worry about adding an hour. It's not, so we can read the high water time straight off the table. Now we're going to assume that we're traveling in the early afternoon. Therefore, if we look at the high water times on this particular day, one is at just coming up to four o'clock in the morning and one of them is at 4.30 in the afternoon, it's clear that this 4.30 in the afternoon is closer to our time of travel. So, what we need to do now is introduce the, this pre-printed sheet here. This is going to help us with the next stage of the process, working out which tidal hour we're actually going to be travelling through. Now, although this is a pre-printed sheet you can download from the website, you don't really need this sheet, but you do need to do the same process in order to do this. Now, let's take down the information we actually need. We need today's high water time, and the high water time is 16 32. And later on, we're going to need the tidal range. So as it's between um, the high, uh, high tide at 4.30 and the low tide earlier in the day, we were travelling in the early afternoon, you can see that the tidal range is going to be the difference between these two heights, 4.4 and 4.2. So in this case, if you take those away from each other, Tidal range is 2.2 metres. We don't need that information quite yet, but that will be useful later. We're now going to use the high water time for Victoria, our standard port, to complete the rest of this table. Down the left hand column here, you can see there's a space for the high water time, the HW time. So we're just simply going to write in 1632 exactly what we wrote down there and exactly what we took off the tide table earlier. And we're then going to fill in the times for the hours before that. So one hour before that would be 15.32. And we'll go back all the way to six hours before. And we'll do the same in the other direction. So you can see the first one in this direction would be 17.32. And we'll take a moment to complete that. Now we've completed this table all the way from six hours before high water through to six hours after high water. With a bit of practice you'll realise you don't always have to complete the whole table, but for this exercise it's worth just doing that. Now we want to start thinking about what these times actually represent. Now let's look at one example. Let's look at three hours before high water on this particular day, 13.32. That tells us that 13.32, three hours before high water at Victoria in this case, we could use the three hours before high water page in the Tidal Stream Atlas to tell us what the tide's doing at that particular time. Or we could use the minus four uh, row in the Tidal Diamond table to tell us again what the Tidal Stream's doing at that particular time. 1332. Now, the tide's not going to be doing that just for that one minute. It's going to be doing it, or we could at least estimate that the tide's going to be doing that for one hour. And it's going to be, in fact, half an hour, 30 minutes, either side of this time. So in this particular example, you can see that we could use the three hours before high water time for any time between 13.02 through to 30 minutes after, which would be 14.02. And you can again see that you can do this for any of these. If we look at two hours before, we can use the tide that's shown on the tidal 
uh, stream atlas as two hours before high water or the row for two hours before high water we can use that estimate of the tidal stream from any time between 1402 and 1502. These hours here are referred to as our tidal hours and for the purposes of this exercise just to illustrate the point we can complete this table all the way down going back an hour each time and going forward an hour each time and we'll do that now. Now you can see that we've completed this table again we don't normally have to complete the whole table. If we know we're traveling for just two hours, say a couple of hours before high water, we'd only need to complete, say, this part of the table here. But for the purposes of today, we've completed the whole table. So now going back to our real world situation, let's imagine that we're traveling for one hour um, between one o'clock and two o'clock. Now, what we have here is 102, to 202. Now that's close enough. So our tidal hour that we're going to be interested in is this three hours before high water. We're interested in three hours before high water. So what we've done here is we've turned to the page in the tidal stream atlas for three hours before high water. Let's do what we uh, did in the previous video and let's see uh, the process all the way through. Um, we're in this area here so we're going to measure this tidal stream arrow. First of all, using the plotter, we're going to put the plotter across the arrow, lining up the arrow with the edge of the plotter. We're going to move the plotter so the bezel, the thing that moves in the middle, is across the edge of the page and we're going to line the north up with the top of the page. Once we've done that, we can lift this off and we can see that uh, the tidal stream appears to be going at 298 degrees true. So we can write that in this pre-printed section here. 298 degrees and that's true. We also have two other pieces of information we can take off this tidal stream atlas. We've got the two rates. As we've discussed before the neap rate there uh, represented by the 0 7 is 0 0.7 and the spring rate is represented by the 1, the 4, is 1.4. And we'll look at how we calculate the actual rate for today in a later video. We wouldn't normally need to go any further than this other than the next step which is to work out the exact rate which we'll cover later. But what we're going to do now is show that we could have found out this direction and speed of tide using not the tidal stream atlas as we have done a moment ago but actually using the tidal diamonds. We picked a location on the tidal stream atlas which is also represented on the training chart by uh, tidal diamond A. And as we're going three hours before high water, in a very similar way, we go up this table to three hours before high water and we can see there that uh, the direction is shown as 297 which compares very closely to our 298 degrees measured from the tidal stream atlas. We also have a spring rate of 1.4 and a neap rate of 0.7. You can see that this information has come from the same source. The only slight discrepancy, which is quite normal between the uh, two directions, really comes down to the measurements and how closely, um, accurately you measure the direction of the tide from the tidal stream atlas. That's a run weakness about uh, measuring the direction of the tidal stream atlas.